I started out primarily doing experiments in markets. And my first appointment was at Purdue University. And uh, I was teaching principles of economics. And I realized that there was nothing in my education that enabled me to understand the connection between economic theory, supply and demand theory, theory of markets, and what people actually do in markets. The decisions they make day by day. My mother was a socialist and had a Harvard education. I wasn't prepared to see markets work that well. Probably my interest in economics was motivated uh, originally by my experiences of the 30s, but my my initial idea was to study uh, uh, science and engineering. But as a senior, I had a course uh, introduction to economics. And I just, it amazed me. I didn't know that there was a, f a field that involved kind of a rigorous uh, intellectual treatment of this topic I wasn't, wasn't aware of. Economics used to be a non-experimental science. Nowadays, experiments are routinely conducted in specialized economic labs all over the world. The elegant methods you have developed are invaluable components of the empirical toolbox in economics. There's a quotation by Wittgenstein that really summarizes Vernon. He, There's no more light in a genius than in any other honest man, except that he has a particular kind of lens to focus that light into a burning point. Vernon is someone who could never fake it to make it. Vernon could never do that. Vernon is so completely sincere and authentic that he couldn't be any other way. He, everything he says is from his heart. He doesn't tell fibs. He's my hero. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Tonight, we celebrate great experiments and a great experimentalist. Born in Wichita, Kansas, Vernon Smith's early life was on a small farm which sustained his family modestly through the Great Depression. Vernon worked for Boeing as a teenager, helping to troubleshoot the gun system on the B-29, the world's first high-altitude bomber. He managed to get into Caltech and learn from great minds like Linus Pauling, Robert Ivenheimer, and rub shoulders with Robert Millikan and other legendary figures. Vernon went on to do a PhD in economics at Harvard. His first teaching post was at Purdue, where he began using experiments in the classroom as pedagogic tools to help students understand market processes. This was to become a major focus of his subsequent research. At Purdue, Vernon conducted classroom experiments with the students to see how and when markets would clear. Sometimes his experiments confirmed economic theory. Sometimes they challenged it. Vernon Smith and Daniel Kahneman, as you just saw, won the Nobel Prize for Economics in 2002. He received his prize for, quote, having established laboratory experiments as a tool in empirical analysis, especially in the study of alternative market mechanisms. When I first started studying economics, we were told that unlike the physical sciences, economists would never be able to perform controlled experiments. Vernon Smith changed that view and experimental economics is now a flourishing subfield of economics. It's being used to study and inform electricity pricing, airplane landing slots, spectrum auctions, the properties of Dutch and English auctions, and many other things. But at the end of the day, Vernon is an empiricist. He's not an ideologue, but wants to know what works and what doesn't. His work almost always showed that markets could solve problems without government intervention. The Nobel Prize is pretty good accolades. 
but how can it match the de Tocqueville Award? <laughs> Alfred Nobel was a great industrialist, but de Tocqueville was one of the greatest classical liberal thinkers in the 19th century. As a young man, de Tocqueville struggled to help develop a free society in Europe. He was alarmed by the dangers of government control. In 1831, at age 29, de Tocqueville came to America to observe a new, guess what, experiment. The experiment was American society, which was a democracy, decentralized and more egalitarian than European society. To de Tocqueville, America was an experiment in liberty. His book, Democracy in America, described America as the land in which the great experiment was to be made to conduct a society upon a new basis. I'm not sure that these days America is experimenting that much in government. When there are changes, they're usually very incremental. We need bolder proposals like Tim Draper's initiative to break California into multiple states to get more competition. <laughs> This freedom to experiment by starting new businesses and closing old ones is, of course, the essence of capitalism and innovation. As the great economic historian Nathan Rosenberg reminded us, the West grew rich because it delegated to business enterprises the making of investment decisions such as which companies and which technologies need to be advanced and which need to die. Capitalism allows failures and rewards successes. With dynamic markets, we get to celebrate both. Failures help us learn. Successes provide the rewards necessary to keep experiments going. <coughs> Vernon Smith remains a humble and grounded man, true to his roots, on the Great Plains, ever curious to know more and ready to engage in dialogue across ideological divides. It is my great pleasure to present Vernon Smith with the Alex de Tocqueville Award. Thank you for this wonderful honor, David and David. Uh, it, it's just beautiful. I, I am really, uh, uh, it, it, it's incredible, okay. And I really very much uh, appreciate. De Tocqueville was an, an incredible uh, young, early 19th century, uh, scholar whose wisdom uh, concerning his visit to America was truly astonishing. Thank you. Thank you.